Have you ever felt lost in life and you lacked a sense of direction? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create your own vision. What's going on, guys? It's Uzziah, your success strategist. And in today's video, I'm going to be giving you the three-part process on how to be able to create your vision. So please subscribe and be your brother's keeper and share this video. So the first thing that you got to be able to do if you're trying to be able to create your own vision is to begin with the end in mind. You know, there's a powerful book that was written called the Bible. And it says in the Bible that where there's no vision, the people perish. So you could go an entire life just waking up, going through the motions, wandering through life, you know, in a daze, but never really having a clear sense of what is it that I'm going to do with my life? Am I just going to be operating and living how other people want me to live? Or do I have something that I want to bring to society, that I want to be able to bring to my family, that I want to be able to bring to my community? That's what this video is all about, okay? And if you think about another powerful book called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, what's the second habit to begin with the end in mind? And that's what we're going to talk about on number one. You got to be able to begin with the end in mind also known as reverse engineering, okay? I'm gonna write the first part of this, okay? Make it basic for y'all. Begin with the end in mind, okay? Now, not a lot of us do that. A lot of us are so busy trying to be able to connect the dots moving forward but we never recognize that you can only connect the dots moving backward. Here's what I mean. Let's say that you're working at a job right now and you don't particularly like the job, but the problem is you feel stuck in the job because you don't really know what you want to do. You don't know who you want to be. You don't know what you want to accomplish. So even though you might be feeling pain and discomfort in the present moment, you really don't know how to get yourself out of it because you are not beginning with the end in mind. You have not already understood your life's calling and then just taken a step back to be able to connect the dots moving forward to that end journey every single day. Here's what I want you to be able to do. I want you to be able to have a conversation with yourself towards the end of your life. I want you to envision this. I know that this might sound grim, it might sound morbid, but trust me, a big part of success is preparing for the days to come, okay? And I want you to prepare for the day that you leave your legacy in the world, okay? In the short amount of time that God is giving to you because tomorrow's not promised to anybody. I want you to think about the type of person that you're going to be before it's all said and done. When you look at yourself, whether you imagine yourself being 60 years old, 50 years old, only the Lord knows how many years are promised to us. Whenever your last day is on this earth, what will you want to have said that you accomplished in this life? Who do you want to be around in terms of your family? What accomplishments do you want to have in terms of goals and things like that? I want you to begin with the end in mind because in you not doing this in the present, you're wasting a lot of time. You're doing a lot of things right now that has nothing to do with your long-term legacy. And you know what the problem is? Your dreams and your ambitions are probably so great, you don't have no time to lose. So I want you to start here, okay? You know, they got this um, saying that I've heard that when you die and people are looking at your tombstone, there's the year that you were born and the year that you passed away. But what matters the most is what you did in the in-between, that dash between the year that you were born versus the year that you passed away. What's going to be that dash? What is that dash going to represent? You are not going to be able 
to make that dash as great as you can possibly make it until you start at the end first, okay? Really think about this. I know that this is a deep conversation, but really think about this. I want your time on this earth to be as valuable as possible. Think about what all you want to say you have accomplished by the time that you have gotten here, okay? In terms of your work, in terms of your philanthropy, in terms of your spiritual life. We're going to talk more about all of that in a second. But I want you to get very clear about this. So that way, once you've gotten this part down, even in terms of a big picture, right, point of view, that's when we can come back to where you are now. And that's how we can connect the dots moving forward. See, you're not going to know how your dots connect if you don't know what the end looks like. If you're driving somewhere and you don't know the end destination of where you're going, how do you know that you're actually going on a successful road trip? <laughs> right? You got to if you're using a GPS, what's the GPS going to ask you? Add in the address of the destination. Put the destination first. Because before they can even give you directions on how to get there, they got to know where you're going, right? The same thing applies to your life. Give your life a sense of GPS. Put in your end destination. And then from there, that's when God can give you the wisdom and the knowledge on how to be able to connect those dots moving forward to be able to order your steps. Your job is to think about the end first and then begin working in the now to be able to get to that point. Because really all you have is the now. You don't have tomorrow. You don't have any other day. All you have is the power of right now to help get you to the end. Because guess what? Even if you make it till tomorrow, <laughs> once you get to tomorrow, that will be your right now, right? So always think about how to work right now to secure this future. Here's the second thing that I want to tell you. In order for you to be able to have a vision, you need to take some time to review and develop your goals, okay? So right now, in this video that I'm giving to you all for free, I want to be able to take some time to break down the seven major goal areas. What are the seven major goal areas? Let's start with this one. Okay, let's take notes on this. Review and develop goals. Goals are very important. Remember what I said again, where there's no vision, the people perish. What separates people that operate at world class versus everybody else? The people that operate at world class, they have goals. They're written down. They're constantly reminded of them. They're constantly keeping themselves accountable to the things that matter the most. A lot of people in life, they're going through life through a daze. And the saddest part about that is, is by the time that they get to the end of their life, they never regret how much time they spent watching TV. They never regret how much time they spent, you know, uh, man, I didn't spend enough hours watching the latest episode of Game of Thrones. Man, I didn't spend enough hours, you know, checking my news feed on Facebook. Nobody says that on their dying day. You know what they say? Man, you know what I wish I would have done? I wish I would have did this for my family. I wish I would have did this for my loved ones. I wish I would have been able to give this to my community. I wish I would have spent my time and my days building this. We will think and remember at the end of our lives the goals that we set out for ourselves and how accomplished we were at reaching those goals. And so I want to give you the seven primary areas, okay? Number one, spiritual goals, okay? What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You've got to be able to make sure that you seek in first that kingdom and everything else gets added on to you, okay? So that is the very first goal. Now, one of the things that I always want to tell you all about is the importance of having smart goals, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, 
timely, okay? Google SMART goals. When you set SMART goals for yourself, some of the things that you're gonna be doing is specifying what type of goal it is that you have, measuring out the fulfillment of that goal, and then setting deadlines behind the things that you have in terms of goals, okay? So I'm gonna give you a basic one. Let's say that as a spiritual goal, you wanna be able to read the entire Bible. Let's just pretend that that's the goal, okay? Maybe you should say, I'm going to read the entire Bible by December 31st, 2018. Just speaking hypothetically. Okay, that's a specific goal. If you want it to be more specific than that, you can write out the number of chapters that you're going to have to get through. I don't really see too much of a necessity in you having to do that, right? We know that the Bible consists of many books, but you're specifying what it is that you're trying to do, and you have a deadline on which you're going to do it. So, by you just having that deadline in place, that's already going to set you on a certain timeline of how much reading you need to be doing per day to be able to get to that destination. See, what most people do is they talk about these big ideas, right? But you know what they say? A goal without a deadline is a wish. So a lot of people wish to accomplish great things, but it never happens. Why? Because they don't put dates down on paper and then hold themselves to it, okay? So the first goal that you have is spiritual. Now, like I said, this could be many different goals. You could have goals in terms of how much money you wanna be able to give you know, to your church foundation, a lot of different things. I'm just opening up the floor by saying you can have your first goal as a spiritual goal. Number two, have physical goals, right? Because one of the things that God gave you when he created you on the earth is a body, right? A body to be able to get things done. And so your health is your wealth. What did Steve Jobs say before he passed away? He said, you don't want to be the richest person in the graveyard. So you could amass all types of wealth, make all types of money and be living the life while you got it. But what sense is it to be able to amass all this wealth but you won't even be able to enjoy it because you're six feet under, right? Some of the richest people in the world have not been able to buy their way out of the grave. So you got to have physical goals. Your physical goals may be dietary, right? You're going to be able to improve your diet. Maybe you might decide that you want to lose weight. You might have a smart goal that says, I want to be able to lose 20 pounds by such and such date. Maybe you want to put on some pounds. Maybe you want to gain some muscle. Have physical goals for yourself, okay? You might have a goal of going to the gym a certain number of times a week. Maybe the gym's not your thing. You want to go walking. You want to do CrossFit. I'm just trying to open your mind up to the broad world that is here. It's up to you to decide how you're going to be able to spend your day and to spend your life, okay? Number three, financial. You know, ever heard that saying, cash rules everything around me? <laughs> There's a lot of different sayings about this. But the simple truth is most of the things that we need to be able to get out of life requires money. If you're going to be living in a house, that requires money. If you're going to have food on your table, that requires money. So what are your financial goals? Now, Typically, the people that are able to do the most for their family, their community, themselves, are people that have the money to be able to do that because money gives you options. It's not just about just counting money and just being some little greedy monger of dollars that you're just hoarding in your basement like Pablo Escobar. It's about being able to have the options to give yourself and your family a better way of life. It get, it's a means to an end, okay? So have certain financial goals for yourself. Maybe you have a financial goal of getting out of debt. Maybe you have a financial goal of saving money. Maybe you have a financial goal of finally start to invest 
in your children's college fund, whatever the case may be, set financial goals, okay? The next thing that you need to have, second or coupled with that, are career goals, right? I like this in a specific order because of the fact that you really cannot make a sound career decision until you have first identified how that's going to play in tandem with your finances. Now, I want to say something very clear here because I could be opening up a dangerous door in what I just said. I'm not telling you that your career should be driven by the money because there's a lot of people that are very miserable on the strength of that rationale and behavior, okay? All I'm trying to get you to understand is that if you have certain financial goals that you desire to have, you have to know how to be able to structure your career in order to be able to gain those finances. I'm going to give you a prime example of myself. You know, I was working in corporate America for a number of years, and I was making pretty good money. But one of the realizations that I had was that I was never going to be paid what I was worth in the position that I was in. I was never going to get fully rewarded for every gift that God had given to me out of that job. So understanding that I wasn't going to get what I was worth financially, that dictated the path of how I was going to go about shifting my career. And that's part of the reason why I became my own business owner. So that way I could go out and get my real worth financially. Okay. So the two of these things are very important because you got to be able to balance out how the two work together. Some people, they have all the financial goals in the world, but they have no idea on how to choose a career to be able to make the money. Some people have a career mapped out but they're not being realistic about how that career is going to put food or the lack of it on the table, right? Some people go to college and you get a career in underwater basket weaving. Then you get out of college and you got hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. And then you're mad at the system all because of the fact that you're not having a job that's being able to pay you buku dollars. Well, if you were to take in more time to be able to balance your financial goals with your career, chances are you could have came to that conclusion before you racked up all of that debt. But it's never too late to be able to get this in order. Even if you went to college and you didn't know all of this growing up, I didn't know all of this growing up, it's never too late. Never say never. Now is the time for you to learn it and you can start modifying your behavior. Just because you went to college for something, it doesn't mean it has to be your lifelong career. But going back to career goals now, you need to understand what type of career do you want to have? Over 80% of people in America today hate what they do for a living. And this is one of the biggest tragedies in first world countries, all because of the fact that you spend the majority of your adult life working at a job. So if you're going to spend the majority of your life at work, you might as well do something that leaves you fulfilled. Set a career goal that leaves you fulfilled. Take something that's based upon your natural strengths. Take something where you can dominate. Take something where you can be great. Don't just disregard today's video. Always bounce from one job to the next. Not really have goals. Not really have a purpose. Not really have a dream. And you just allow life to bounce you around from one dead-end position to the next. You should not do that. Okay, now what's the next thing that I want to touch on? The next thing that I want to touch on, and this is in no particular order, so I want you to also keep that in mind as well. Maybe your structuring of these goals are different than mine. Okay, so just take however you want to be able to take it and work with it to make the most of your life. The next one that I'm going to write here are family goals. Okay, this is very important. You got to be able to have family goals. You know, I know a lot of brothers that work every single day, but they never take their families on vacation. And sometimes it's no fault of their own. They're working hard to make ends meet. But I want you to understand something very important. If you don't set goals in your life, 
Don't expect the benefits of life to happen to you by magic. Everything that you accomplish in this life has to be well woven into your plans, right? So nobody just gets to the top by accident. <laughs> Somebody had to operate off of a well woven plan. Nobody has, you know, a great relationship by accident. That was something that required a lot of commitment woven into their day-to-day -day lifestyle. So if you want to be able to have a great family and you want to be able to do great things for your kids, for your spouse, for your loved ones, for future generations that you might not even live to see, you got to start having family goals in place. Why is all of this important even if you don't have a family right now? Because you don't wait until it starts raining for you to be outside and then want to go back home to get a coat, right? If you know that it's going to rain, you want to keep an umbrella just to keep yourself protected. You need to start planning for the family that you don't even have right now. So that way it can help your life transition as smoothly as possible. You know, we're all going to have our ups and downs, but the more that you can be proactive, which is the first step, in the seven habits of highly effective people, the more you can be proactive about your life, the better off your long-term life shall be, okay? Next thing, social goals. Have you ever thought or wondered about how to be able to have a social life in addition to all the things that you're doing physically, financially, career-wise, etc.? You gotta start having some social goals, again, Things don't just happen by magic. You know, some people are a little bit more spontaneous and some people are going to naturally gravitate to some areas more than others. Some people are very socially inclined, so they're naturally going to gravitate to social things without having written goals. And that's good for them. But chances are there are going to be very critical parts of these goals that they're not so naturally wired to do. And if they don't have goals in those areas, guess what? They're not going to go very far in life when it comes to that capacity. And it's going to hurt because all these areas are important in their own individual way. Okay. Don't think you can shortchange any of these. If you don't have spiritual goals, you can go through your life amassing all these different things, but there can still be a huge void that's inside of you. If you don't have any physical goals, you're going to put yourself in an early grave. If you don't have any financial goals, I guarantee there's going to be things in your life that you're going to miss the opportunity of being able to do all because you didn't plan for it. Right now, you might have a loved one that's on their deathbed. And you can't even take the time off of work to visit them. Why? Because you don't have the financial resources to make it happen. You might have a loved one that you might want to take out of certain miseries that they have. Buy your family member a house. Take a family member on a vacation, but you can't do it for free. What about your career? You're going to spend the majority of your life operating in your career. So if you want to have a good life, you need to have a career that actually fulfills you, okay? Rather than you just trying to make a living and just get by. Isn't that selling yourself short in life? Just get by, just survive, right? You want to be able to thrive. Family goes. Family is important to many people, right? You can have all the money in the world, but if you don't have any relationships, you're still going to feel pretty unhappy in life. I know millionaires and billionaires, they got all the money in the world, but guess what? They don't have those relationships and a part of them is unhappy because of which. All of us at some deep emotional level want to be loved and we want to be able to have someone that we can build something with on some level. Okay. Next social goals. Again, what good is it just for you to do all this and be a hermit, <laughs> be a recluse, be a loner, right? Be a lame. You need to be able to have social goals. Okay. And lastly, I'll put on here intelligence. If you are going to accomplish anything in your life, you're going to have to learn something, okay? Nobody just pops out of the womb and then instantly they know everything that they need to know to be spiritually on point, physically on point, financially on point, etc. 
Anything that you're going to accomplish in your life requires learning. All successful people are lifelong learners. So you got to set some intelligence goals for yourself. What's one of the things that I like to do as an intelligence goal? Read a book a week. Why do I do that? Because the average CEO in America reads a book a week. So if I'm going to be a competitive business owner that wants to be able to do better for my family and my people, I got to learn how the game is played in order to grow my business. We damn sure didn't learn it in school. We damn sure didn't learn it from our boys up and down the block that didn't know nothing about how to start a business. So where do you think that you're going to learn it from? <laughs> Are you just going to be able to snap your fingers and a magic genie is going to teach you how to be the next Bill Gates? No, it doesn't work like that. You got to put in the time to learn, okay? So set your intelligence goals. Now, the last thing that I'm going to tell you in this video, there's a million different things that I could go over. I'm trying to keep this fundamental in today's video, all right? You need to be able to develop a vision board. Set up a vision board for yourself. Why is a vision board important? Because we are a visual people, okay? I'm going to say that again. We're a visual people. Why do you think that all these social media platforms are largely based around videos and pictures? Because we like to look at images more than we like to look at text, okay? So when it comes to the things that you desire out of life and you're looking for that extra motivation, create your vision board. Because guess what? There's going to be times that you have goals and you're going to be burnt out. There's going to be times where you're going to strive for things in life and you're going to get rejected. You're going to get turned down. You're going to have failures and you're going to have setbacks. And it's going to be very hard for you in those moments for you to muster up the energy to keep going. But that's the reason why you got to be able to have a vision board next to you to keep yourself reminded of why you're going to do what you're going to do. I'm going to give you a quick example. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger he became pretty much the top bodybuilder ever known to man, right? He won multiple Mr. Olympia championships. And even though you might say, oh, well, steroids, oh, well, you know, I know brothers that are more diesel than that. Just stick with me here. Don't lose the point, <laughs> all right? Don't strain at a gnat. What I'm trying to get you to understand is when you're looking at the habits of people that have documented levels of success, you need to understand the habits that they exercised to help them reach the level of success that they had. One of the things that separated Arnold Schwarzenegger from a lot of his opponents that he would beat in multiple Mr. Olympias year after year was that all around his bedroom, he always had pictures of the physiques that he was trying to get down. He had some of his mentors that was on the board. He already had a mental picture of what he wanted to look like long before he was ever there, right? And if you want to accomplish anything in your life, you got to see yourself being in the position long before you're actually in the position. You know how they have a saying, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You've got to be able to envision the type of person that you want to see yourself as long before you're there because if you don't visualize it first, it's never going to happen. You're not going to wake up one day and then success is going to knock on your door and hand you your fortune on a silver platter. If you want it, you got to go out there and get it. And it's very easy for you to forget what you want to accomplish out of life if you don't have a vision to keep you constantly reminded in an extremely distracting world of what it is that you want to be able to do with your life in a way that's specific to you. You know, your friends might have opinions about things. Your family members might have their own vision. And if you don't have a vision for yourself, you know what people will do? They will pull you into their own agendas so that way you spend the rest of your life building up their empires building up their dreams, okay? But you got dreams of your own that you want to see accomplished. And I'm giving you this video so you understand how to be able to bring that to your life. 
Last bonus tip that I will give to you here, okay, as a man of faith. Ultimately, whatever vision that you have that comes to pass can only be ordained by God. And so what I would encourage you to be able to do is to pray for the spirit of discernment on what your vision is. Pray for clarity on it. Pray for God to show that to you and order your steps, okay? And then examine what are the things that are suited to you. Look at the signs. Look at the writing on the wall or maybe some areas where you have certain natural advantages, right? So, for example, if you are four foot one, it shouldn't be in your vision to compete in the NBA, right? You just don't have that genetic makeup. You could want it all day, but I don't think that that would be a realistic vision for what you could actually accomplish. Start looking at your natural gifts. Start looking at your skills. Start looking at your experiences. Start listening to the things that people will tell you that you are good at doing. Take all of those things together. Pray for the spirit of discernment so more clarity can be given to you about what your vision should be and then make the conscious decision to walk in that every single day. Plant your seeds, and hopefully God will give the increase. All right? So make sure that you subscribe to this channel. Please be your brother's keeper. Don't leave this channel a secret. I'm giving you all these videos all for free because I love you. I love my people. I want to see us get ahead. A lot of these things we've never, ever been taught in our life. And it's up to you to be that example that you want to see for the world. All right. Take care. I'll see you on the next video. Until then.